Welcome back, Deep Ruby TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here. And, you know, 20 years ago, Phil Askey, the founder of DeepRubyView.com, wrote an article about just how ridiculous the naming conventions were regarding small sensors. You know, these were really ubiquitous at the time in point-and-shoot digital cameras and the like. And it's still a factor today. And then I, my first thought was, well, what was I doing 20 years ago? I was living in London, England, and I was high on ecstasy, dancing at raves and stuff. It was, it was a good time. Any, uh, anyway, so the second thought I had was, it's been 20 years, why haven't we done anything about this? Well, we finally have done something about this, and that is what today's video is regarding. We have now come up with the standardization for how we're gonna talk about small sensors going forward, and it's more important than ever because now you've got smartphones and drones using a lot of these sensor sizes and many more, and I think we need to clear things up. So the root of the problem when it comes to the naming of smaller digital sensor sizes is that they're given with this imperial set of measurements and fractions. So for example, some common ones would be a one inch sensor or a one over 2.3 inch sensor. And I mean, it's very easy to assume that that measurement has something to do with the actual size of the sensor itself. Maybe it's a diagonal measurement or maybe it's a measurement of uh, the length of it or the width of it or something. The fact is that's not the case at all. Not to go into a big history lesson, but it really has to do with an ancient uh, you know, standard of measurement of the TV tubes that we used in the 50s. I mean, the actual outer diameter of the glass tubes and then relating what digital sensors would actually fit inside that diameter. I mean, if it sounds confusing, that's because it is. Regardless, we have a standard from 1950s TVs that we're using to associate with modern digital sensors and we're still using these imperial measurements, which are very confusing. Plus, we've got fractions, which don't really give you a very good idea of how physically large that sensor is even in the first place. Now, here's the two things that we want to achieve with our video today. First off, at Deep Your View, we've decided to go forward and just drop the inches nomenclature altogether. It's confusing. We don't need it. We are still going to stick with the fractions because, frankly, people are used to it now. It's a standard that's, you know, would have to be completely reinvented. So, we're going to go now with referring to small sensors as type and then the fraction. So, type 1 over 2.3. Now we're going to continue this naming convention as we go up, you know, just throw out some examples. Common point and shoot camera, which of course you don't find really anymore. Uh, 1 over 1.7 inch sensor, well let's call that a type 1 over 1.7. Uh, type 1 over 2.3, or the largest sensor size that we'll use this for, the 1 inch sensor. Again, 1 inch has nothing to do with anything about the sensor, but we'll call that a Type 1 sensor. Now we go to sensor sizes larger than that, then we're getting into the sort of interchangeable mirrorless camera size sensors and SLR sensors. We're going to stick to the standard naming conventions that have become very popular over the years. So. A four-thirds sensor, we're going to call that a four-thirds sensor. You know, this is commonly found in micro four-thirds cameras. It's a common misconception that four-thirds sensors were called four-thirds sensors because they were 4-3 aspect ratio. Not at all. That's just a happy co coincidence. It's totally, again, this TV tube bull Anyways. APS-C size sensors, we'll still call APS-C size sensors. Yes, we will point out when Canons are Canons because they're slightly smaller. Uh, full frame sensors, we'll still call full frame sensors. Okay, so I think we've addressed all of that imperial measurement bull We won't have to deal with that anymore, but we still have a dilemma because the sensor sizes are still confusing and they don't really give you an idea of how big they actually are. Sometimes the numbers can be very similar too. Take for example this, we've got a now type two third sensor, but also a type one over 2.3. I mean, you've got similar numbers. What does that mean? How big are they in comparison to each other? Well, that's the next thing that we're going to address. So this is what we've decided to do at Deep Your Review going forward, not just for the articles on deepyourview.com, but for our videos as well. When we talk about these smaller sensor sizes, what we're going to do is actually give you the physical dimensions in millimeters. So take, for example, our type two third sensor. We'll also label that it's going to be 8.8 .8 by 6.6 .6 millimeters, okay? That way you have an idea of not only its general size, but also its aspect ratio. Compare that then against the type one over 2.3 sensor. Well, that's going to give you a 6.3 millimeter by 4.7 millimeter sensor. And again, that gives you an idea of the relative size. Now we compare multiple sensors against each other, say multiple size sensors in a smartphone or different products against each other. What we'll also do is the math for you. We'll just do the multiplication. As you can see here, you'll see the square surface area in millimeters of each of these sensors as well, just to again further clarify their relative sizes to each other. So Jordan and I just figured that you know we should relay this information to you, the viewer at home, because this will be the standard that we use in our videos going forward. This will also be the standard that DPRview.com uses in their articles, and we're all on the same page. And so 
you know, honestly, if you guys want to leave praise, just be like, thank God for you guys. Such a great system. You know, leave us clap emojis and stuff. Put those in the comments below. We'd love to see that. Definitely email your favorite YouTubers out there. Just be like, why aren't you guys doing this? It's such a brilliant idea. Definitely let them know. If you have any complaints or criticisms, you feel like, oh, this isn't going to work. This is a terrible idea. Well, then you should absolutely check out Richard Butler's excellent article on DeepReview.com. That link is down below as well. And then leave those comments and criticisms there under his article because he will get back to you in a very civil and constructive manner. Anyways, as always, we really appreciate you guys joining us in this video. We hope to see you soon with another episode of Deep Review TV shortly.